The Marla and Dayton radio experience begins in three, two, one. Now, if you're ready, we will begin. Welcome to the Marla and Dave Radio Show. This is reality radio with a couple that keeps it real. Current events, pop culture, music, relationships, fitness, the hot topics of the day. Marla and Dave Thomas. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Real radio. Turn up! Welcome to the Marla and Dave Show. Wow, we're back. I did it on purpose, Dave. Synergistic. I wanted you to know in that unison that tandem was possible. <laughs> I wanted you to know that vocal choreography exists. I'm like, well, I already and know about that. That doesn't look that. like this. That I already know about. I'm not sure that we'll I can. Take six moves. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to the Marla and Dave Show. Um, I'm Marla, um, and I'm Dave. Dave, we've had a very um, hard week. Lauren, can we turn the music down just a little bit? Um, we we are will soon be joined by our resident sweetie, but in the meantime, there's another little sweetie slash hottie who's helping us out today um, as an engineer. Lauren is with us. Hey guys. And hey. yeah, Lauren, by all means, keep your mic on. You <laughs> might want to ask us some questions. This is Lauren's first time engineering the Marla and Dave show. Um, she doesn't understand what a ride it could possibly be. Let I'm me just so say, ready. you're ready. So ready. Are you serious? Wow. Oh, yeah, oh, for sure. I, don't I even, love it. She's so sure. She just intimidated me just a little <laughs> teeny tiny bit. Um, you know, here's the one thing I'll say. You can't see well, Lauren. Can I say one thing to Lauren myself? Sure. Lauren, you know, my wife, when she's like doing selfies with me or taking pictures, she likes to cut off the top of my head. Dave, your head is just extra long. And, it's not me. And so I, I'm looking over at the camera and I'm thinking that I'm, my whole head isn't in the frame. <laughs> I got you. Thank this you. This was not planned. We did Thank not you. coordinate did, did, I was this. wondering if Marla actually got together with you and she usually tries to... Uh, you know, keep me from being seen for the whole person that I am. Really? Yeah, you do that, Marla. I've noticed that. You always act like I... You know what I thought you were doing? Saving the top half of your head for later so you could, like, look like a whole different person. <laughs> like, you had a hat on the top so then you could get to, like, segment two and just flip out. Anyway, um, we have a lot to talk about today. Um, but before we even go there, we just want to be sure that we let everybody know... That's not the correct document, this is Marla. Not You're right. going to have to pull the document up on your computer. Okay. So, And that's something that you're I don't not need, used to. I don't, I don't need I, to. Let me, let me give the pitch today. Okay, if that's go ahead. Okay. Let so, everybody know what to expect. Uh, first of all, you know, the Marla and Dave show, we say it all the time, is in existence because of our, our friend and mentor, Mr. Halloran Hilton Hill, the Triple H. And today, Halloran's going to stop by the studio, and we're going to have a, first of all, a catch-up session, just catching up on old times, what everybody's doing now, what Hal is doing now, and then Hal is going to share some of his wisdom tips with us. Which are powerful, by the way. I, I might add, I honestly want to say that if you don't listen up today, if you miss something today, you could probably miss a nugget that would could positively alter your goals um, and your success, seriously, like it's, it's almost you just know somebody's gifted to do something that when they do it, um, it's it's it penetrates, and that's definitely how, uh, with his wisdom. All right, um, man, let's start with our mood songs. So, um, Lauren, do you have a song that you want to play for me that says Marla? Yes, I do. All right, let's hear it. This is the life I live. And that's just the half of it. You saw me on a television. All right. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out how that, you know, we'll, just, we'll get you to ex it, explain is, your mood song yeah, I'm a little explain, bit later. I'm going to explain my mood song when we get into uh, our week in review, which is really only one thing. So, Lauren, could you hit me with my mood song, please? Of course. Oh, Pretty much, topic explain it. Ex, you know, explains itself. David, um, so without back to, saying back to weird, the who the hell is Switchfoot? 
Can you just really? talk to me about that? Did, Lauren, did she just say that? Don't talk did to she Lauren. Just her turn, shirt says, did she hurry just up turn and get 65? in my pants. I mean, pass. <laughs> did she just turn 65 in our presence? I love Switchfoot, they, so yeah, I can't. I, you know. I'm sorry. Anyway. Babe, it's just that you're like a acapella, like, you no, know, you're gospel wrong. singer. You're I don't know where you find all this to, movie. You're music. constantly trying to box me I in. I am, Dave. And I just can't be contained. I see that, Dave. My musical taste can't be contained. You or your forehead. Nobody oh, wow. can hold it back. <laughs> <laughs> See what I mean, Lauren? Cool. See what I mean? That's so cool. <laughs> See what I mean. <laughs> okay. Anyway, that's in honor of Hal. He is the and Marlon Dave show started with Hal. We're going did. back going to the back beginning. To the Thank beginning. you, Switchfoot. For okay, Marla well said. now I know what Switchfoot is. Um, All right, you've had a heck and, of a few days. And wait, by the way, Trey uh, Thomas Murphy says, big up to my media mentor and idol, Haller and Hilton Hill. Love you, bro. So I'll be sure when Hal gets here. Hal will be joining us, by the way. Um at 6.30. So for those who don't see Hal here at this moment, he will be joining us. But that gives us a chance to air out some um, some an extended uh, drama that is, it's not even a drama, it's a reality. And then an extended reality um, that we're actually currently dealing with in our life. Uh, we started a conversation last uh, week on our show about mental illness. And um, <clears throat> since then, uh, the the social media explosion um, after my post uh, to Brandy um, in regards to some issues that were going on with her influence on our son um, came to a head, um, and that's what we're we I'm gonna go ahead and get into that, and I'm and I'm and the reason that you hear me kind of hesitant, I want to go forward and say that through that post, the good part about that post is that it did spark a phone conversation that finally got the point across that there should be no contact mm. before that no attempt no attempt to be able to um beg that that whether brandy's intention is to help or to befriend or whatever it was um including including us saying that it's it's way bigger than that it's not received as that um was fell on Deaf ears, including At least so it seemed for a because fact, because it just kept, kept because going the on. contact kept going on dis despite the, the dangers that were present um, that Dave and I actually experienced. Um, so after watching it for six months and realizing that this is this is never going to end, the only way to even be able to access the conversation at that point was to do what I did in all responsibility. I have no regrets for that, but I'm very regretful for the conversation, and I'm also very regretful for anybody. Um, who is suffering in this situation because it's not just us more importantly we of those of us who are involved who have a sound mind be grateful for that because the suffering um, for those at this point my in my son's condition and where he is right now he can, he does he's not even aware um, of how far away from reality that he has actually fallen so for those of us who have a consciousness um, be grateful for that well, and to sort of wrap that up with some closure, the conversation was had between you and Brandy, and things are contained at this moment. Correct. I, uh, yeah. In other words, it's it's not it's not my, my it was never my intent um, to publicly punish, but to definitely um, express. I, I'm gonna just be flat out honest. I, the way you I felt was, about the yeah, situation. It was it, the situation was to me was justified anger based on all the things that had been openly shared and all the requests and the pleading and begging to please just not. So, you know, it, which, again, turned out to be where what you see now is what we all get. The only difference is um, others move on and we live in it daily. Yeah. So uh, usually in our week in review, Marla and I are talking about some tennis match that we played or several tennis matches that we played during the week. This week, we did not get, Marla didn't get a chance to play tennis. I played tennis, and of course, I had to play singles because it just didn't work out. But you know what? I was victorious. Well, don't go anywhere. Um, when we come back, we're going to open our phone lines, 323-524-2599. And in light of all this happened, uh, we're going to focus for the first, until we get to speak with Hal, on social media. Um, literally, social media what our effects are, and, and how it plays a part at this point. We'll be right back.
You're listening to the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. Okay. Don't, don't oh, hit, playing, that, hit that, hit yeah. that, Lauren, it's not playing. Current <laughs> events, pop culture, the hot topics of the day. It's time for Mad News on the Marla and Dave Radio Show. Ladies and gentlemen, Marla and Dave. All right, and the first story, it's more of a political story. Uh, you know, we have a situation now where we know that the Trump administration has kind of overturned uh the Obama administration's promise to the Dreamers, uh, uh, the DACA um, act where President Obama basically said those children of immigrants uh, that were here, whether they were here illegally or not, since it wasn't their fault, they would pretty much get amnesty or at least a delayed, uh, uh, indefinite delay to the them having to even deal with whether or not they were going to be deported or not. Oh, uh, tr- the Trump administration came in and said that we're going to get a, to do away with that and end it immediately. And uh, now we have at least two dreamers themselves that are suing uh, the Trump administration, along with there were already Good. a couple of uh, state at, uh, uh, attorney generals that were suing the Trump administration. But now we have actual dreamers that are suing the Trump administration. So to me, that's a very... Oh, man, this is just one thing after another, isn't it? It always is. It's it's the it's the Trump effect. It's not going to end. You know, that's just what happens when you have somebody that functions and operates like Trump leading our country. Um, Spicer. <laughs> Spicer <laughs> made an appearance <laughs> um, at the Emmys. Wait, so Marley, you and I didn't get a chance to see the Emmys, but when I went back and looked at some of the clips, you know how... Um, uh, they used to have on Saturday Night Live, Melissa McCarthy would come in right. kind of driving the right. podium. Yes. All of a sudden, uh, Sean Spicer at the Emmys walks out with the podium as if he's driving it out. <laughs> Hilarious. Like also, oh, he's actually showing I have a sense of humor yeah. about all the things which, that were which, a joke which, to me. Which was pretty cool. And Stephen Colbert was like, you know, I can really... His little joke line was, I can really understand why some of them want one of these kind of guys on his team. And at the end, he said, uh, we want to thank Melissa McCarthy, which was actually funny as well. Uh, But then Kellyanne Conway was basically saying, A, she's glad that when you're in the limelight like this, you need to have a sense of humor. But she still didn't like how everybody seemed to get on stage and just kind of dog Donald Trump. It's, It's too easy. Yeah. It was just way too easy. The whole administration is actually a target for any comedian, bottom line, because anything <laughs> that's extreme is quick to be able to be made fodder of. Um, not so funny uh, is the headline story about Kevin Hart and his public apology that he made to his wife and his children after a woman was threatening to release sexually suggestive video. Now, I will tell you this. It, these are usually entertainment news items. It was a little bit, I was like, wow. That was an actual mainline story on the on Channel Seven Network News, I, local news. I was like, "What? What?" Well, I think the first time you mentioned it to me, it seemed like it was a little nebulous as to what information was being put out there. He was just making a standalone apology. No, and you, you thought it was out of, out of left field. No, I no, yeah. It, I mean, obviously, it. it the, I guess the question I really have to ask is: Is this just? Uh, result is this a volume issue when you have somebody that has that has has that much popularity and people have that many fantasies about you the more you get seen um I, not to even dog kevin but i have to I laugh it, because I in the real world i'd be like oh kevin you are funny but you're just too short bro I, well, but well. i think when you're when you can stand on your wallet i don't know everybody I, I wants to you know get in your pan past. right quick when your dad <laughs> <laughs> right quick when your dad was and i were talking about the uh it's not the michael jordan the uh, the tiger woods the tiger woods scenario he said that it is a volume situation and so celebrities have to deal with that people come out of the woodwork and it may, may or may not be true Anyway, that but he's is the mad news. And, you know, that's the mad news. Um, time for us to move Get on with back our to show. the show. This ain't your mama's radio show. Can you handle the truth? Then get ready for a real radio experience. Real radio experience. Ladies and gentlemen, Marla and Dave. 
Marla and Dave. All right, now, Marla, the funny thing about it is oh, I Dave. see you keep looking over here at the clock, giving me the eye. My clock actually is running here on my computer. I'm going to just keep giving you the eye, Dave, because I actually <laughs> like to feel like at some point in this lifetime, I'm going to be able to intimidate you to do something somewhere. Again, just, we, we promised that we were going to have our mentor and friend Halloran Hilton Hill join us later on in the show. He's going to be here in the next segment. Right. So in the meantime, um, you know, let, let's, let's the, you know, one of the searing questions I believe that most people are asking and one of the things that seem to be, from what I've read, outraging a lot of people is that um, I actually took what would be a private matter and took it to social media. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I can be, I, I have to be honest with you. I, I appreciate that. I, I that, I, I'm kind of in the middle on that because I, I, I don't usually like that methodology myself. I agree. And you're, you're familiar with that. I'm, it makes me cringe. Right. And I believe that my, our tenants here or what we live by all the time is simple which is literally responsible honesty. Um, but I think that when things get to a point where you have to actually, you know, first of all, the trigger for me is always, um, number one, my family, my children, um, even though they may be adults, uh, but innocence. When something, when something can't defend itself, when someone can't defend, them, if defend itself, themselves, yeah. themselves, or itself, or right, or themselves, then I, even on the street, I'm the person who is very much, I've broken up uh, marital fight strangers. Mm -hmm. Dude jumps on a lady in my neighborhood at the park, random person, and 15 workers Just from, a, from a Caltrans situation sat on the grass eating their lunch, l chuckling and laughing, and the dude was physically in an altercation with a woman. She gets in the car. He throws her in the car, leaves the door open, and runs around to the other side, and I had was finishing up an interval, and when I saw these guys weren't moving, I said, oh, shit, and I took my headphones off, and I went to the car. The door was open. I said, ma'am, are you okay? He said, just get away from her. She's fine. I said, Sh I'm shut up. I'm not talking to you. Are you good? Because and then he sped off with the door open. But what I'm really saying to you is, wait, was the lady in the car? Yeah, he put he put, shoved her into the passenger seat, and she didn't even have the door shut. Hmm. And he ran around to the to the driver's side. And all I'm saying to you is, if more people don't actually stand up and speak up for what's right, I believe that sometimes it's a barrier. And and we as people, and more in particular. High profile people and celebrities have learned to hide. And well, I'm kinda, saying that kind of helped me put that together with the original question as to how that relates. It was to the only it was the taking only something private and doing it. It was the only online. result that was possible to me. It was a last ditch, desperate effort to be able to say this is not OK. It doesn't matter who it doesn't matter how many followers this has this is an egregious act that has literally that I live in the destruction of that every single solitary day. And no matter what the attempt, no matter what what has been private before, it didn't matter. It was still continuing. Contact was still continuing. So what I'm saying is and it's no, you don't have to understand it. But every time, as you and I have discussed privately, it would it would cause a trigger in our home. That that was dangerous. So to me, what I appreciate in the long run is where we came to was a moment of accountability, which was all I'm requiring. Um, I live a transparent life, and usually my transparency is just about the things that are in my life that affect me, but always in a in a conscious effort. Um, to be helpful on some level. When I say that, even to share the transparency of my life through social media, to me, social media is has become the constant way that we all communicate. When's the last time you had a long conversation with somebody on a telephone versus a text? Well, I still do. But I guess what Who, I'm saying mom? I guess what I'm saying is That's it. I guess what I'm saying is this social media has different forms. There's a person to person, direct private message. 
Um, there are uh, open forums where everybody can see it's sort of in a public way the conversation. Um, is there a difference between uh, even the approach through those different uh, media forms on social media <laughs> uh, that we that that you have to actually take a difference on how you handle that? We we have our guest with us. Which chair, which chair should we put that in? That one over there by you. Oh yay! I get to sit. Ladies next and down. gentlemen, the Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> um, David, I want to ask you a question as you as you're asking this. One of the issues that I want to bring up right now, even between you and I, mm -hmm. you're asking the question like you're not in this same drama that I am. Well, and, I'm asking it from a, from a third. person I don't person want you to ask it. it from a third person. I don't want you to be a third person right now. The, this is our son. I don't want you to be third. I want you oh, to be right. first see hand. The, and see, the difference between me and you almost, I think, to an extent is that um, I'm not actually following these things on a daily, no, minute No, but you live basis. in the same And so, yes, while I'm still upset trauma, about that, if I were to run into, then suddenly I handle things in a face-to-face -face oh, different well, I, way. But I had, a, a right, all of those, right. All all of those, those things, things have happened done, to me. I, I had not, is what I'm saying. <laughs> but what I'm saying to you is what's at stake is equally precious to us both. Absolutely. And so what I'm saying to you, it's, I'm asking you the question now. I'm saying, if this was an inappropriate way, or if you felt it could be handled different, what? Share with me what? How? Well, I'm not saying that I would have or, or, or did handle it differently. What I am saying is that when, when you say social media, in other words, there's a difference between, say, using a private message. Is that still social media? Is that is, or, or a private, wouldn't as private text? as you could get be a text? Yeah, I'm saying okay, a text. What I'm saying to you is that I want you to to be able to clearly, and you say what you feel, knowing all the facts that I know. All those things went on to deaf ears. Absolutely. So then what? So so then what? So so you might even have a better way of even coming to a resolution. Um, and I would love to hear what I, this was, I'm a, not this was sure. a desperate thing I'm, for me. I'm, I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure that outside of what actually happened um, that led to the actual phone call um, that ultimately led to the resolution that it was going to be resolved. All right, say that again. Wait, because you need to hear it again yeah, or you I didn't to, understand? I, I need to be clear. That however it happened, I don't think until we had that personal phone call and it was more of a three-way phone call that that would have been resolved. And how? What sparked the phone call? It, it was just, it was the post. And before that, what what results were, had we gotten? I, I'm I'm agreeing with you. You got to take yes for an answer. But uh, but what I'm saying is just say you're right because that's not. Well, I don't not, hear well, yes. I hear I hear something totally different. I'm just. No, Sorry, how you we we, I, I think we were kind of blocked up at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and this, right quick, ha, welcome, Halloran. Uh, can, can we get a can we get a can we get a traditional <laughs> hand clap for for our dear friend? <laughs> there we go. Welcome, welcome, Halloran Hilton Hill, um, in person to our show. Man, this is I'm, we're so glad that you're here, and we really wanted to transition um into something a little bit different we don't want to drag you no into, no, into something yeah you're, you're kind of spectating at the moment because <laughs> yes. we weren't ready we didn't expect you to come so early right right Sorry. so no 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 we're glad you're here we're glad you made it for sure <laughs> but i'm sure you can add some wisdom so jump <laughs> well, in anytime and, you and, feel and the general wisdom is what place are we where does how is it that social media has taken control and how what's responsible social media and the question is, in light of um, this explosion that has happened with issues that needed to be dealt with in my own house, my I took to social media, my own personal social media, and of course that was grabbed and taken to national platforms and blogs and things of the sort, not my intention, um, which is why even in our conversation, the tag was directly to to the person that needed to be dealt with. And... With that, I'm saying that, you know, David and I, when we went on our walk today, um, I said to him, it's interesting, I would love to have this conversation because we don't even see social media the same way. I've, I have given in to the way of social media, and Dave knows it to be, he treats it like a necessary it's, it's evil. It's a tool. It's a tool for so me. But, yeah. but there's so many um, potential 
downsides to it for me that it still feels like, for instance, I don't like when people can put up a false front and I can't really see you face to face. I don't like when people can seem like things are one way, but it's absolutely another way. Uh, I don't like when if I were to run into you on the street. You would you won't never, never say, say those some things of the to things my face. to my face that you would say on on social media. It, it it creates it creates internet cowards is what I call them. Absolutely. So to me that that's what I don't like about it. I don't I don't know that I know much about social media. Um, I'm not good on it. I'm not good on the platform. Um, I've got Twitter, and I just after about four or five years uh, reactivated Facebook, but I don't. I, so you don't want me to at you? No, you, <laughs> <laughs> you might not get a response okay. out of way. So what's your IG tag? You don't know. I have an Instagram, but I haven't. I don't use it. Right. And so, and and when I tell people that, they look at me. They there is a sorrow in their eyes. Like, <laughs> you, you, you're oh, like, are, are oh you okay? you're just missing out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you do realize you're being left behind in this universe, right? So I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know how social it is. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a I, good. That's a good statement. But I do know that it's media, and 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 I had some. I had one thing happen to me that was just like. Well, there were two things that happened. Uh, one was. Um, I got on Facebook. I remember I started on Facebook and I was amazed at, at the speed at which people started to connect. Res- yeah, respond, yeah. Or- right, so so I started hmm. in, in the first day I had 212 friends and so I just said I am going to say yes to every friend request and just see how far this goes. Yeah. It yeah. not far if it's personal cuz they right. block you at 5000 people. Right. So I got to five thousand, yeah. and they and they blocked me, yeah. right? And so, so all these people are interacting with me, and uh, this guy calls me and he says, "Hey, man, can we have lunch?" Sure. And I knew the guy; he was a great friend of mine. And so we go to lunch, and he said, "Man, I got to talk to you about something really important." I'm thinking, "Oh man, um, he got the diagnosis, right? Yeah, right." Yeah. So we're sitting there, and it's like, you know, just talk to me, man. Whatever it is, we'll pray through it. We'll do whatever. He said. Um, you have a friend on Facebook, and he said the name of the person. Had no I, idea. I had no idea. Who <laughs> Didn't they ring were, a bell. Right? Yeah, those, those are, yeah, those right. are the jewels. <laughs> right. And so he says, "My wife hates her," and so because you and I are friends, and he sees that, and she sees that you and her are friends. It's driving a wedge. It's driving a wedge. <laughs> So I brought you to lunch to ask you to delete if you could defriend her <laughs> and friend my wife. <laughs> my wife sent you a request that you Wait obviously didn't Hold respond on. to. Let me stop for a minute. Did Halloran just say that he had an unfriend lunch? <laughs> right. A lunch with the agenda to unfriend? So, so this, this, this really happened, right? And so the only reason I hadn't friended his wife was because I was at the 5,000 cap. I couldn't, yeah. right? And so he's like, so because it's really creating a lot of problems for me, you being her friend, and I'm going to have to defriend you. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you can't help me with this problem. <laughs> do, 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 do you guys remember that commercial? Where the old lady is doing it, yeah, and she's, yeah, yeah. And she's like, this is my it wall. doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It just doesn't work that way. So I was like, um, I said, dude, I can't, I don't want to be even part of whatever this is. I just don't want to do that. Yeah. Right. And I remember yeah. that day going, man, this is not social. Um, and then I had another situation where I was backstage at a concert and um, all these people are moving around. The lady said, can I take a selfie with you? And I'm standing in the stair. I'm standing in a stairwell and she's standing above you. Two yeah. step, two or three steps above me. And the way she took the selfie. <laughs> I know it was in your right? mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't, it wasn't that. But the way, the way she took the selfie, it looked like with the lighting that she was sitting on my lap. Mm. Oh. Right. So she posts the picture, right? Right. Started getting flagged. Oh, man. And I'm like, today we stopped. Right. I've actually had real friends, uh, Hal and Marla, that would get angry with me because they make a post or, and, and I don't like it. Or, or here. Right. You, I, you, you, uh, what happened? You were supposed to call me. Well, you didn't like my post. I was like, what? Here's the other thing. The, the people who 
will you're talking about that the people who will say i invite i sent you an, an invite and i'm like uh, let me just and i do social you have my phone i do number. rules by the way hal okay. at the beginning of every year the okay. five things that are, are not going to happen i change them every year one thing i did this year was when you post on my page if it's more than two sentences it's a blog don't write a book right. as a post right that's just number one one right number two if my phone number is in your phone, you are an actual friend. Pick up the phone call and me. call me. Don't three, then you know, smack yourself if I don't show up to your event because what you expected me to do was scan through <laughs> two thousand <laughs> event invitations. Right. right. Number four, it's like breaking into my house. Don't add me to a group without my permission. Stop. Right. Get me out of your groups. I don't want to be in, you know, your mama wears um, Christian Louboutin shoes. Do, you right. know, mine too. Don't do it. So there are things that, that are just social to me. It's like this is kind of the way of the world, but there are things that make common sense. And then the, f the fifth one for me is prom I had to shut my page down. Don't promote anything that I'm not promoting. Right. Before you promote on my page and post something on my page, it's my page. It's like well, see, painting had, my I house in no your color. I had no idea that all those things had to be disciplined. Until I told you, Dave, there's washed in a disciplined way. There's Only a big booty girl on your page. I was a you pornographer gotta... for a little while. I didn't even know. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so, so those. I, I don't. I don't do it well, but I. But I understand that we're in this this dispensation. Um, the the chairman of Google, Eric Schmidt, wrote a book about the new digital age, mm. and he talked about. Um, how our lives are becoming digitized and that our virtual selves will be more important than our, our actual, actual selves, yeah. right? So what, what hit me, too, was this. Um, I, I, I'm always a student of business and how businesses work. Mm -hmm. And so when I looked at the, the platforms, it was like genius because – uh, we're here in Hollywood, so you got all these networks, and they have to pay billions of dollars. Mm -hmm. I saw where Hulu is putting up two and a half billion dollars for original content. Mm -hmm. Wow! Uh, to to stick some eyeballs to mm -hmm. their network. Mm -hmm. When you look at Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, Snapchat, Snapchat, Twitter, what you have are companies that have found a way to get you to produce the content. That and brings they, people the to advertisers the to the platform, absolutely. And brings the money to it as well. Right. And you do it for free. And not only do you bring eyeballs that they can monetize that way, but there is a qualitative set of information that they have on you because the algorithms follow everything that you do. Right. So, so they, they know, know your great, proclivities. With great specificity, hmm. you like this or mm -hmm. you like that. Yeah. So they can go back to their advertisers and say, I can give you... 20,000 people who in the last two days have said Christian Louboutin or 10 or whatever. Red bottoms. Red bottoms. <laughs> that have said that and posted right. pictures and have done whatever. And when I saw that model, I thought, okay, I get that. But now I see there's a whole group of cognitive elites, digital elites that are above us that are monetizing our drama to create free content. Rather than paying Jerry Seinfeld thirteen million an episode, right? So, <laughs> wait. Let me just say this now. How it first started out that he didn't really know much about <laughs> social media, now, and he now he's built, teaching. He has his own platform, <laughs> and that's what I love about how he, he has the, his own platform. I, I call him the original plumber. Oh, I just want to be used. <laughs> <laughs> like a, like a great preacher <laughs> before he starts laying out all the information. Anyway, our guest is Halloran Hilton Hill on the Marlon Dave Show. The number to call is 323-524-2599. We're going to take a little break and come right back. So... I actually didn't hear the actual tagline go in because it was actually turned down a little bit. Marlon, it's time for the Ask Marlon Day. What's the question? The Ask Marlon Day, first of all, for those of you who do not know, is when you actually 
Visit us at our home at www.marlindave.com. Click on the Ask Marlin Dave uh, tab. Give us a question that we answer right on air, and it kind of bypasses the red tape, and you don't have to wait so long. We get to you before you have to call us. Marla, what's the question for today? All right. The Ask Marlin Dave question today. Dave, this is a short one. Mm. It doesn't involve the three-letter word that you love most, which is sex. So just deal with it. <laughs> um, it says you and Marla live a high. Uh, you and Marla live a fairly high-profile life. What is the best and the worst thing about being in the spotlight? So I'm curious. Uh, man, I think the best thing about being in the spotlight is when you have something to say. You sort of have an outlet that you can have eyeballs and ears listening and watching what you do to sort of get your messaging across. I think that's also um, the worst thing about it, because when you don't want those same eyeballs and those ears listening and watching you and following everything that you do, they're still there. Um, well, I would first ask, I wish I had, sometimes I wish I could speak to these people, but I would want to know what you qualify as high profile because I would not even consider us high profile. I mean, you know, we're if, profiled. We're, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, the best and the worst thing about it, the best thing to me is the platform. The best thing is that purpose, um, for me in particular, uh, I've been, a lot has been put in me. Um, to say and I take my influence very seriously um, period and so to me that's the beauty that you can actually share something with someone that may change their perspective or help them in any particular way or just make them smile I mean I w no matter what it is whether it's on a small scale influencing one or whether it's thousands um, I'm, I feel honored to be a person of influence that people look to for to say something of meaning um, the worst part about it is that everyone is constantly, you you sit in the seat of judgment, and if you're clear about that, you understand it, and you take that as well as part of the responsibility. So the judgment, it, it gets hard. Um, for me in particular, and I'll get into that um, as we get into the next, when we, when we actually finish answer, answering the Marlon Dave, I get into the next segment, I'll tell you a little bit about that. But that's essentially it in a nutshell. Hmm. Responsibility is awesome, and the judgment um, is the hardest thing because I'd like to respond to that um, to every soul that I can and try to enlighten, and it's just not possible. This is where we also allow you to actually ask us the question in anonymity. And so curious, you wrote in, asked the question, hope that helps. We're going to get back to the show. Intelligent. Fun. And super real. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show. We should right. have made Hal do the drops <laughs> while he sat here. How dare us not put Hal to work? What, oh what, what, my goodness! Just because he's looking all you know, felt and then black and everything. I don't. <laughs> don't, don't, Lauren. Next time, Lauren. By the way, Hal, Lauren, Hi, Hal, Lauren. Hi. right? Nice Hal, Lauren. Uh, now, yeah, don't play the next drop. Hal will do it. That's Hal that we're listening to. By the way. Uh, yes, Hall it's Halloran kind of is the voice of the color pieces <laughs> on the Marla and Dave show <laughs> and how we just want to in person say how thankful we are to not only your friendship, your mentorship. I love you guys. And, Man. Uh, you're welcome. Anything I have, you have. Man, and I remember. Can when I hold your wallet? <laughs> yeah, in it. yeah, absolutely. Are your cards the same color as your shirt? <laughs> so going all the way back to the beginning, um, uh, someone had contacted uh, the Take Six's publicist and said, "Hey, would Take Six be interested in the show?" Right. Remember, I came to you. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I think you, Chris, Marion, and I were at the Cracker Barrel in Nashville, and you said, "Man, I'm not sure." If it's, I'm gonna have a hard time coming up with a show where all six guys will be on different mics on the radio on the air at the same time. And I can I see that that would be chaos. And I said, "Well, what about a show for Marley and I?" He said, "Now that I can wrap my head around." So, so my question right off the bat, going back into the Marley and Dave show, as first of all, let me explain as well that one of the things that you have done for years. Um, to the best and highest level is you have a talk show. You have a t an actual straight ahead drive talk time show, talk show in Knoxville, show. Yeah. Tennessee, and All television. Day. So yes. you basically are, um, I'm going to just call you a media mogul on, yeah. on multiple platforms. Yes. Not mogul, but yeah, I did yeah. the show here in L.A. today, four hours. 
Wow. wow. And yeah, that that whole non-sleep thing. I'm not. You, know, you see where we are. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that makes you a beast in my eyes. Right, all right, right. Um, what what did you see? In what, you guys? And yeah. What did you see? Authenticity. Hmm. Um, it's what I see today. It's what I saw on Facebook the other day. Um, I love the way you guys love each other. Um, it's specific. It's beautiful. It's messy. It's real. Um, but I love the way you guys love mm. each other. And that was inspiring to me um, because you guys have at your advantage this ability to to let each other be your true selves and you encourage that. And I just hadn't seen that anyway, anywhere. And then also the candor. Um, you take the risk of truth. And that's a beautiful thing. And I thought, yeah, they they probably will do something because if they show up that way on the air, it's going to connect with people. There is an authenticity deficit that, that people respond to, and that was what I saw. I really loved the way you guys hmm. loved each other. And then, so, then you came I'm, in, man. I want to be sure that Hal, kinda... we clear that up, there, there was no video camera in Hal. <laughs> <laughs> not, not the way we loved right, each right, other. Right, right, right. <laughs> the way that we, so, right, right. we yeah. have our loving interaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was what joking when I see. said that was a pornographer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so, man, the, the thing about it is, people aren't as familiar with all the things that you actually do. Mm -hmm. When you and I talk on the phone, you have a, a, a group where you're, teach wisdom uh do you still do that yeah so uh out of a need for it hmm. i started to pursue it so yeah. um about a decade ago um i had been studying the the the, the proverbs of king solomon mm -hmm. and studying the life of king solomon just out of a need for wisdom wow like i need it uh and so then i started studying wisdom literature from around the world hmm. so every Every kind of culture has their own wisdom mm -hmm. tradition. Mm. So I started collecting proverbs and books of proverbs from around mm. the world, and I was just fascinated by it. And one day I'm driving down the street, and they say, if you ever want to know something better, teach it. Mm. So I was having what I call a yes week with God, where yeah. it was just like, I'm going to say yes to whatever you bring up. Mm. So I'm driving down the street, and I hear Whoa. God say, start a proverb study group. I said, can we do this next week? <laughs> <laughs> let me check. This is God, my week. God, let me check my uh, schedule. Maybe. Did I say yes? Maybe. So, so literally, I go, yes. And I'm driving past a very large Southern Baptist church in the city that I live in. Mm -hmm. And it's close to my office. And I thought, I know how to fix God. I will request to use one of the breakout rooms mm. at this large Southern Baptist church. They will, this thing will die in committee. Yeah, they'll say no. They'll go, <laughs> well, we need to take this to the committee. You're not a member. <laughs> right, blah, right, blah, blah. Right. So, I, so I'm driving by literally after the yes, and I, and I call and I say, can I speak to the pastor? And they were like, absolutely. I'm like, Dang, can, I he, can he be out at lunch? <laughs> <laughs> Surely he's going to refer me to the committee. <laughs> so, so pastor picks up the phone. I said, listen, I'm driving in my car and I hear God say, start a proverb study group. I know that's crazy. I would, I think I'm supposed to do it at your place. <laughs> if you need to take it to your facilities committee and your board, he goes, uh, I don't know. I'm like, Oh yes, 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 yes. Keep going. You're on the right path. <laughs> right. Right. And so, and so he goes, uh, oh, we got a problem. I said, what's that? He said, what day did you want to do it on? I said, um, Tuesdays. He said, yeah, 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 yeah. He said, we serve lunch to the entire staff on Wednesdays. And so there's no, there would be no food for your guys. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hang on one second. Right? Hey, and Mary, yeah. can we move lunch from Wednesday to Tuesday so we can wow. feed these folks? Wow. So not only did you, <laughs> the person comes in the back. Not and only me. did you get the yes answer from God and the pastor, but you got lunch. Manna, right? Oh man, <laughs> that's crazy. Wow. Manna. So, so, so then I tiptoed. I was just like, "Well, I've never done this before." Um, and so I told John Wright, yeah, our yep. friend, yes. yep. and the realest guy you ever met. What a awesome. Hey, John. Love that guy, man. Indeed. That that guy is real. 
Um, I tell John Wright and one other person, I said, hey, if you're around Tuesday. Just stop by and have right. lunch right. while we talk about Proverbs. <laughs> right. And I think three people showed up. Wow. Right? But the commitment was God told me to teach it for teach the class for 10 years what? without saying anything to anyone. And he said, if no one shows up, hmm. if you have a session where no one shows up, Teach the class anyway. Teach the empty room. Wow. So it was a teaching lesson. The so, yes was to the teaching. So I was like, Ugh. so it meant preparing a, you know, PowerPoint handouts, you know. And so I just went hard. So mm. three turned into six, 12, 15, 20. And before I knew it, we had outgrown the room and we had about 40 or 50 guys wow. come in every week. And we finished 30. So it's a chapter a week for 31 weeks. Hmm with an introduction and then six weeks of Ecclesiastes hmm. in a non-denominational, non-religious study about wisdom, wisdom wow. um, being skill. So guys started coming and they started telling their friends and it was professional athletes and CEOs of banks and drug dealers. Hmm. Wow. I mean, wow. It was, the mixture of people was The just, diversity was in, uh, through the roof. It was incredible. Root. And... Uh, so then I would say, okay, we're going to take a couple of weeks off and we're going to start a new cycle of the same. And every year I would rewrite all of the lessons. Hmm. So I'd, I'd do them all over again. So you didn't just use your old syllabus, you started a new one. So I'd do it all over again. So a lot of the guys started coming because uh, wisdom in Proverbs kind of looks like this. Um Everything changes when you get better seats. So mm. you go to a stadium, if you're sitting in nosebleed, you see the game one way. Out of binoculars. But if right. you are on the 50-yard line, you can smell the game. Right? right, right. And as you grow in wisdom, you get better seats. Mm. So you start to see the same verse differently. And Proverbs is, is meticulously layered in a way where just when you find, you think you fought, found the meaning of something, there's a deeper meaning hidden mm -hmm. in it, mm -hmm. and it just keeps going deeper and deeper, mm -hmm. almost like those Russian dolls. Just, Absolutely, you know, layer after layer. layer. And so we started to discover all these new things. Well, what happens, though, is the discovery of something, you know, you love the learning, but living it is a whole different thing. Hmm. And going to Proverbs class will not change who you are or how you act. Mm -hmm. Um Wisdom is about trusting God more than you trust yourself. Mm. That's what it. That's what it all boils down mm. to. So anyway, I started doing that, and it's been about a decade. And um, yeah. oh, so it's been the ten years. So yeah. now the question yeah. is: Are you? I remember when he started that. Yeah, you're going to continue ago. to do it, or yeah. I, wow. Can, so. can I just break in right here and say something that that I don't want to diminish your efforts, but I, you know, I feel like that I could have been more productive with my saying yes. I said yes, too. I ended up in Jamaica at Vivica Fox. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what happened to me. I, I feel like I At I'm a like, phone party. You got better yes. I was at a phone party. I, do you want to go to Jamaica? Yes. The hell's doing wisdom. And, you got a better and yes. And I'm foaming it. What the what? The what? Again, we're here with Halloran Hilton Hill, the guru of wisdom. Uh, the number that. to call in is 323-524-2599. Now, how you also teach leadership. Now, did that come out of the teaching the wisdom, or was that how? Did, where, where did that come from? You know, um, first of all, none of this is about me. Honest, I mean, in all honesty, I don't know. I, I really don't know what happened, other than uh, I'm a nerd, hmm. and here's my definition of a nerd: a nerd is just someone who never found the off switch to their curiosity. Wow! Hmm. Right. And what's crazy about it is we've actually known Hal since high school. So when we say we go way back. <laughs> we go way. We go you know, way. And, and Dave back. and I. Hal used to joke as a radio this, an this announcer is, in high school. This is what I we did. were saying. And he, that's what he is for real. He knew. He, you, so he you always knew. like he was our manager and he actually was managing us for a little while. I mean. It, so it was. I mean. So, so here's what happened. I literally. Uh, about 30 years ago I was in uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands running a radio station, Hurricane Hugo hits, we lose everything. We moved to one room at my sister's house in Knoxville, the only person I knew there. Wow, with the family. With the family. Mm. It's just me, Nidra, and my son, Halloran. And um, it was, you know, guys define themselves by what they do, mm. right? 
we define. So when you don't have anything to do, you really don't know who you are. Wow. If if you haven't matured. If that's your definition. Right. If you haven't yeah. matured. And I remember sitting there just trying to figure out um, my life. I was starting over at 300 bucks. I didn't know anyone in Knoxville. And I remember reading the, the story of the parable of the talents. Mm-hmm. And the, the basic idea was double what's in your hand. Mm. So the first thing I did was take an inventory of what I believed either were the things that I was passionate about or that I was reasonably good at. Mm. And I came up with four or five things and I said, what if I tried to make some type of business out of each one of those things? Mm. What would that look like? Mm. And Do you what remember if, the four? So speaking, uh, writing, um, music, radio, television. Got it. Right. Mm-hmm. And so I started to pursue each one of those things. As I started as a speaker, I would speak at events at the University of Tennessee. And about 14 years ago, uh, the head of the executive and professional MBA programs invited hmm. me to do a one-off uh, lecture. Hmm. And they do teacher evaluations after the uh, lectures. Yeah. And when the evaluations came back, he said, would you do another one? And then I started noticing people from the department showing up yeah. when I would do things. And 14 years later, I'm still collaborating with this guy. Hmm. Wow. What's, what's interesting is I don't have a degree in business. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which wow. Is odd. And uh, and usually at the university level, not only do you need to have a degree, but you need to have a doctorate, a PhD, absolutely. in order yeah. to teach at that level. So they've been, I mean, they've been not very kind. What, not if it's, it's what you're gifted to do and somebody called God opens the door for you. And right. it gets really the right, about yes. effectiveness. Yeah, I'm <laughs> not trying to be funny. Yes. So I, I don't want to give the impression that it's bigger than it is, but I do, I have been lecturing at the university for you know, about 14 years. And wow. I, and I, in that time, I guess I should have earned a PhD, but <laughs> you give out PhDs. <laughs> <laughs> You're the creator. Hilarious. Wow, man. So what are some of the other things that you do? So I do a daily radio show that right. I've been on the radio for 35 years. Hmm. What's your, um, what are your call? The station call letters in Knoxville? Uh, News talk 98, seven W O K I. So I do current events, talk four hours a day. I do a weekly television show called Anything is Possible. Hmm. And these are great stories about great people whose lives prove that anything is possible. And we're we're in our 15th year. We've done about 400 shows in 15 years. Um, By default, I've become uh, the manager of an artist by the name of Chris Blue, Hmm. who is the season 12 winner of The Voice. Woohoo! Can we cheer cheer for that? (laughs) He was bomb. (laughs) Absolutely. So that's why I'm in L.A. He's doing some stuff this this week here um yeah and i got a family <laughs> <laughs> that's on his man, other I'm hand i'm not even sure you have how you have you know, time for one of those things but man you squeeze it in well there. what i do know is um because now i understand your social media i just want you to hold your son responsible because i tagged him because oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> i was looking up i was looking up Haller, and now i'm like wait violin oh that's the wrong this one. Is, right this is how this is Haller and hill the second i got it um, anyway, so yeah, so this is, so you, the broadcast, you left the room with you, working with your, I mean, you were with your sister yeah. in Knoxville, and then did you go straight from there to the radio station? No, what what happened was, and please tell me if I'm boring you with all, uh, all of this stuff, because- Oh, no, um, man, that's so, why you so, here. so here's what happened. I'm, I'm sitting on the on the front porch. You're going to tell us what happened. When you're going to hold back. that thought. And you're going to finish it Absolutely. when we come back That's from this next tease. break. <laughs> <laughs> we're, about, we're about to get to the doghouse. We'll be back. It's time for the Marla and Dave doghouse. Marla has something that should put Dave in the doghouse. Dave has something that should put Marla in the doghouse. You decide who gets a biscuit and who gets busted and ends up in the doghouse. doghouse. I think the last time that we visited the doghouse, Marla had willingly just actually set up camp in the doghouse. Uh, so Maybe I get I, tired of the you, you throw you biscuits get first, and bones. And, you get the first option. Okay, to let see me who's tell you why Dave's going into today. the doghouse. Dave's going into the doghouse because, as many of you know, I am also a, one of my five talents is for um, professional fitness training. Many times, Dave says. 
dang, that's whack. You change everybody else. You're right here. Why don't you write me a program? Work out, work out, work out. So my, the, our daughter, the youngest one, says, Mom, I have a gym in my, in my where I live. Can you write a program? I said, yes. So Dave says one day, I'll join you, and I'm going to train you both at the same time. So the other day. Well, you can train us both. I can train both of them at the same time on the same program. Mm-hmm. So I have them working in tandem. The other day, Lexi was not ready to work out. And I said, look, Dave, come with me over to Equinox. We'll stay on track. All Dave had to do was run. He had to walk for two minutes, and he had to run at a speed of 6.0, which is a basic jog on a, on no incline. I look over, two minutes, and then cool down. It's, two, it's five minute sets. I hit his button. Stop. Stop. I said, dude, just get to 6.0. He goes to 5.5, but my point is, if you don't want me to push you, why even enlist the trainer? Just right. just walk around on the treadmill on That's your good. own. That's you don't need one. me for that. That's a good one. You know what? I'm gonna stick with the Slam same the theme. I'm gonna stick to the same theme. Now, eat the boom. during that training session. <laughs> how you can li- hear me on this? Don't first try of to all, enlist your friends. First of all, because you're uh, both men. We had gone through, and it was optional for the second time to do the running. You said if you really want to get extra burn, I come said, back and let's do it back, again we're at the do end. Run segments. And so when I came back. I'm thinking that this is an optional thing. You took the option. I took the option. And I was thinking that I had the option to do sort of at, at my run. This was after the entire workout that I'm thinking, so I'm, I don't have enough left in me to hit at 6 0. Two minutes, Hal. He gave, so, he's, I think what he's saying is he gave what he had. No, no, Hal. He, he, cheats his, he cheats his little run segments. No. He starts the thing. Way he turns it down early on the cool down. So we're going to leave it up to you guys. <laughs> Who's going in? I'm thinking maybe it's a semantic. I'm thinking with the communication. I'm thinking it was my option. I'm thinking Marla's can, saying that I have to obey I'm the trainer thinking, no matter what. Don't ask me to train you if you're going to train yourself. You can do that effectively without me. Wow. Who's going to go in the doghouse? Wow. Who's going to get the biscuit? Who's going to get the bone? You guys decide. We're going to get back to the show. <laughs> <laughs> What's 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 the action? You laugh. <laughs> you learn. Huh? You learn. Mm-hmm. You'll get mad. Shut up. You'll get happy, <laughs> but you won't be bored. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. There's so how there's all kind of stuff, by the way, going on in the chat room. Um, Bring us how you speed. had a, you had a you earlier there was a young man in here who was, uh, said you were his media mentor, Trey. Trey, yes, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Trey. I don't know his last name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trey in Knoxville. Are you serious? Yeah. Are you trying to be funny right now? No, I'm not because I didn't give you a last name. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't know if these are radio games you're playing with. Me I don't right know. Now. I don't know many Trays. I know a Trey in Knoxville. That, yeah, he said you were. Well, he said you were his media mentor. Absolutely, He's great. And you just great here young yet, man. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. I told him I would be sure to pass the message along. Absolutely. We've got people here. Um, welcome, whether you're on Periscope, whether you're on hey, Facebook, guys. whether you're in the chat in in the UBN Radio Network. Um, chat room, welcome. So okay, so I can't really see me, anything how, that's really going on though because I'm not wearing glasses. How you mentioned that you were working with Chris Blue? Yeah, congratulations to both of you, by the way. Thank especially you. him, he's an incredible talent. He really is. Um, but when you were telling me about this uh, earlier, you said you had a three prong approach to how you were going to actually kind of work this thing out on his behalf. Yeah, so. When it comes to artist and artist management or the, the, the development of anything, mm-hmm. um, I say there are three phases. Yeah. Get ready. Get noticed. Get paid. Okay. Let's talk about get ready. That's how, the, how, how do that's, we get ready? That's the most important thing. Yeah. So, and look, Before you say this, let me say this. I love when somebody breaks uh, a huge... Yep. multi nuanced endeavor down to three simple steps. That's why I watched the TED Talks, by the way. So you you have now sort of reduced this to uh, to three steps. So uh, being a student of excellence and wisdom, um, my definition of wisdom is that wisdom is highly developed skill and insight. Insight being a deep intuitive understanding of people and situations. Because hmm. if you have skill but you don't know how to uh, apply it Mm -hmm. it doesn't work highly developed skill and insight applied for the right reason at the right time to produce the right result Hmm. right so in order for you to be effective at anything the first investment is the platform of skill or competence Hmm. so readiness is about 
having facility with your skill sets. So ready is about identifying the core skills that one would have to have facility with in order to do what you've been called to do easily. Hmm. So, so what does that look like? Give me, give me so, a, a, so, a so example. Give me, so I can, give me yeah. an example. Um, for me, in, in my career, one of the core skill sets was storytelling. Mm-hmm. I had to learn everything I could about storytelling, wow. writing, hmm. communication. For Chris, because of the kind of artist he wanted to be, um, he sings, dances, acts. He does the whole thing. So three or four years ago, we decided to identify the skill sets. Number one was, he said, I want to dance, but I'm not a good dancer. Dance lessons. Hmm. Um, I want to write music, but I'm not a good songwriter. Okay, you're going to write a certain number of songs every week. Yep. Uh, I want to be fit, all right? We need to be training. Uh, I want to understand people and psychology, all right? You need to study that. I need media training skills, that kind of thing. So we identified five or six skills, and then we built what I call a mastery curriculum. Hmm. So you design your own curriculum. Mm -hmm. So in dancing, what are the core competencies of a great dancer? Okay, how do we schedule that into your to your week so that you're learning and growing and, and there's a feedback loop to let you know you're making progress. Okay, we're going to write music. I write songs. We're going to write two songs a week every week. And you're going to come to my house and we're going to do whatever. We're going to So we built a mastery curriculum and he bought into it. Hmm. And 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 you have to be willing to do that when no one is looking yeah. and there is no fruit. Yeah. Right? This is foundation work. This is the foundation. Because if I notice you before you're ready, you'll let me down every time. Mm. Wow. Mm. Mm. Right? Dang. Well, I know, right. I know Lauren was ready to be seen. Cause you <laughs> so, so, uh, and I'll tell you where I got that from. I got it from Jerry Seinfeld. He wow. was invited to be on The Tonight Show a number of times and he turned it down hmm. because he said, my well-crafted five minutes is going to provoke people booking me to do 20 minute sets and And I'm not ready for 20. And I don't have, what happens when they invite me back the next time Yeah. and the next time? So he had to invest in the skill. So I'm glad you asked about the ready phase because that's the most important thing, but everybody watching and listening, the one thing you should know is you actually can design your greatness if you're willing to identify the skills that you should invest in and you know it's important to you by your schedule and your checkbook. How, how, how do you know? How do you know how to clearly and definitely um, come to a conclusion about what your skills are? Because I think that for a lot of people, the question would be: we question whether we're really talented. Like, for here's a good example: how many times have we? I used to watch American Idol just for the auditions, just to laugh. Right. And I used to always say. Who told that person to even go down this road? Seriously, somebody <laughs> near you failed right. you miserably by even sending you out because, baby, if you want to sing, you can sing. And they sound like a frog. Why are you out here? Just so right. we can do this. So what I'm saying is everything I want and everything that I think that I would like to have and do, I may not possess the skill to have and do. So how do More I? More specifically, I think kind of where Marla's going with this is you said you designed the feedback feedback loop. Who actually monitors that loop, and how do you know whether it's actually working? <laughs> Those are good questions. I don't know I have the answer to all of them, but I will, I will draw you back to one thing. One thing that will identify if you have a true passion for something is if the passion is connected to purpose. Hmm. So if you only want to be, remember, highly developed skill and insight applied for the right reason to produce the right result, I mean, with the right time for the right results. Yeah. If if you are just doing whatever it is you're doing because you want to be famous, it's not enough. You, let me mm. jump in here. I, I taught this to some kids. I, I speak at schools. And last year my theme was fame is not a career, it's a reputation. Yeah. And I said to the little kids, and I said, oh, they, what do they, raise your hand. I said, does anybody know who Kobe Bryant is? Everyone raised their hand. What does he do? They said basketball. I said, you know why? Because he's one of the best to ever do it. That's why we know who he is. Fame is actually a reputation, which is why there's fame and infamy. Because you can be known for some dastardly BS. It's out there. Anyway, sidetrack. Go. So I I think... 
purpose has to drive what you're doing. Mm. And I think if you're just in pursuit of fame, first of all, you're in pursuit of something that's hollow. Mm -hmm. it, there's no caloric value or nutritional value in fame at all. Mm. Um, so if you ask people to tell you why they want to do something, that'll out them every time. Because if you don't have a compelling why, I don't think you can sustain whatever it is you want to do over time. So that person that just wants to sing because they want to be on TV, producers can manipulate that because they know you look ridiculous. Right. Mm -hmm. You know you look ridiculous, but at least you were on TV. Right. And you got what you were going so after. So your right. fame your fame desire was satisfied. <laughs> right, right, you don't right. get anything else, but you get that. And by right. the way, the same thing applies to relationships. Go ahead. Tom. So 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 th that's the if <laughs> right. when I run into people who are willing to do the ready part mm -hmm. and to do it with joy and it's connected to purpose. So with Chris, uh, we had an, a very interesting thing. Um, he and his brother sang together in a group, and um, I was working with them. And what was, what was interesting was we went out and we did this visioning process, which I, which I recommend to everyone, which is take out a sheet of paper and write down all the things that you would do, be, have, or contribute if you couldn't fail. Hmm. Did Say that one more time. All the things that you would do. Hold on. I'm going to write it down. <laughs> Go to class. I'm going to school. <laughs> all the things you would. Oh, my goodness. Go ahead. Go ahead, Hal. All I'm the sorry, things you would you do, be. Have or contribute and contribute yeah. if you could not fail. Yeah. Now, the hardest part of that exercise is believing that you couldn't fail. Right. Right. So we sat there and we're writing down all of this stuff. And he would go, You think this much is too much? Or this, that the rule is you, you can't, can't fail. fail. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we write it all down. All right. So you take that whole thing. And I said, Now, let's do exercise two. Um, design the perfect day in that life. Take hmm. me from morning to evening. Tell me where you wake up, where you're yeah. driving, who you're yeah. with. <laughs> Love you it. Know. So we go through that whole thing. Say, say it again, a perfect day? Perfect day in your ideal life, right? So we go through that whole thing. And then I said, uh, now, let's reverse engineer a price tag for that. Hmm. Let's get a number. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What would it if you were that this person, day cost how much <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> if you were to be that person what what does that and so we're sitting and 100 out of 100 people that i've done this with do the same thing when they when they get that big audacious crazy number mm -hmm. in their head <laughs> every one of them does like this <laughs> and I don't want anybody to take it off the paper. <laughs> don't steal my paper. This can't I wrote be real. this number down. This can't be real. Right. <laughs> See, the fact that the fact that we hesitate to believe that we could even imagine but that we life. all do it when we talk about lottery money. Yeah, when the right. one person wins, we all do it. If I won the money, here's I what would I would do, do. Right. So he sat there and he's looking and he's like, wow. So we sit there for a minute. And so we wrote down everything that he was currently doing. Mm -hmm. And it was all inside the box of the church. Hmm. Right. And so I said, everything that you want to do is over way here. over here. Yeah. And he said, but if I leave this box, does that represent betrayal? Mm. Am I leaving my brothers? Am I leaving the church? Am I leaving? Now, we're in a park in the middle of Knoxville. And there's an old boarded up church in that park. Mm. So we're looking at the, the sight line from the picnic table we were at goes right to the church. So we're sitting there. I draw an arrow out of the box to this bigger list. And I said, so what's your why? And we determined that his why was light and glue, that he wanted to put light in the world and he wanted to put glue in the world to bring people back mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. Right. So I said, what if you could do the same thing with this much larger platform? And I drew an arrow outside of the box. Mm. And we both got really emotional mm. because sometimes when you make that step to a higher level, mm -hmm. you feel like you're leaving things and people behind mm. that have been committed to you, that have been whatever, to do something else. Mm -hmm. And he thought his family would reject him and the church would reject him. And he grew up in a holiness background. Hmm. But what if you could do this over here? So we draw the box. He has an emotional moment. And then he decides to do the one thing that every winner does. Winners try. 
Mm. Right. They try. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we whenever you make that big list right there, the first thing you do is you pick one or two things that you're going to do this year. Low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. And you schedule them. Like you go, okay, I got 40 things here. What's the simplest one to do? Number one. Now let's put that on the calendar. Let's Mm -hmm. break it into action steps Mm -hmm. and let's schedule those on the calendar. And week one is so, so he, so he, so it was tryout for the voice and he moved outside of that box. Mm. He was picked on the last day, last slot, last judge, last man standing, last man standing. (laughs) And Alicia's there and she's like, there's gotta be somebody. And the other judges are saying, come on, Alicia, just pick somebody. This thing is over. Last day. Mm. And he wouldn't be there. 70,000 people tried out. He wouldn't be there if he hadn't tried. We go back to do a photo shoot for a magazine in Knoxville a year later. We're in the same park. Wow. They're doing a $25 million renovation of the park. Wow. And they've turned the church into an open air event facility. So what they did was they took all the walls out of the church, Mm -hmm. left the superstructure, Mm -hmm. right? And now it has the box has no walls, right? Which is, wow! Which is wow! A, <laughs> that, 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 yeah, that's which crazy. Is a great metaphor, right? That metaphor is Absolutely. crazy. Absolutely. But but the but probably the the meat of what I'm saying is, if 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 you can just imagine whatever it is, and then if you are willing to try, and then if you are willing to organize your effort, hmm. if you're willing to organize your effort, and if you're willing to there's a great book I would recommend to everybody watching and listening. It's called Grit by Angela Grit. Duckworth. Mm-hmm. Grit by Angela Duckworth. And her work just really lays out that the most successful people in the world are people who have tenacity, hmm. not talent. Hmm. It's, it's you push through, you know, George Leonard wrote this book called Mastery. And you know it takes about 10 years of effortful study to achieve mastery mm-hmm. in anything. And most mm-hmm. people are not committed to anything long enough. But he said... More than 10 minutes these days. He's, here's what he says. The curve kind of looks like. We start something, we have initial success, and the curve goes up like this. Mm-hmm. And then you reach that inevitable point of difficulty. Mm-hmm. And we take difficulty as the invalidation of whatever the call hmm. was. It wouldn't be difficult. It would be serendipitous if it were the real thing. Right. right. So the difficulty hits and you quit that and you start something else and you have a rise and you quit that hmm. and you have a rise and you quit that. And when you look at the line over time, it's a line of mediocre that goes from thing wow. to thing to thing. Wow. He said what masters do is they start something, they try, they hit the plateau and they and they intensify their effort joyfully on the plateau. Mm. Eventually, you start to have the rise again, mm-hmm. and then you'll plateau. And you, but mm. you keep keep adding value, keep going, and you do like this. And when you look at it, the plateaus become steps. Wow! But if you draw a line just on the on the corners Absolutely. of the steps, the line goes straight up. Right. So can you sustain yourself? Do you have the grit to sustain yourself mm. on the steps? And I, I, it's one of the things that I learned from studying wisdom was that is the way of life. That is the way of the world. Mm-hmm. In a vineyard, um, I have this, this slide that I have that has the life, uh, a year in the life of a vineyard. And month by month, it tells you everything you're supposed to do in a vineyard. And what you end up with is 345 days of 320 days of preparation for 45 days of harvest. Right. Hmm. So it's more work than harvest. Yeah, absolutely. And the people that buy into the maintenance, the plateau, what happens is they have vineyards that produce vintage years. Hmm. So that's a 1965 Merlot, and that's a 71. The vines will overproduce, Mm -hmm. right, if you can stay in the long haul. And I think that's what happened for Chris was he bought into that mindset Mm -hmm. that what if I teach a class for 10 years and nobody shows up? How how long have you been working with Chris? About six years now. Okay. And we're just starting to see the fruit of that. And it's, I mean, it's happening in, in a great way. But once again, I keep calling him back to who he really is on the inside and what his greater purpose is, not the 
not the fame of it. All I right. get I get wound up, guys. I'm sorry. Dude, no, no you know what? I, I was well, you going to stop but you would, and yeah. say you have two it's minutes ridiculous. to get to the get noticed and get paid. But it was more important like to actually talk in, about the get ready. That's like running in on a chicken laying an egg and saying, no, you, we need these eggs. This is important. These, I got a whole, I don't know about you guys, <laughs> man. but every time we get with Hal, we don't actually, sometimes we just cut up. And it is really a class. Get, We're is. laughing and joking, but it's yeah. going to class every laugh, time. You, you can laugh if you want to, but. I got a pen and a paper, and I'm, I'm a taking a picture of that before I leave. Absolutely. I'm just like, no, you're not, Lauren. This is Absolutely. my paper. You had an opportunity to write. I stole your pen. No, I'm just kidding. We're here with Halton Hiller. Halton? <laughs> you just changed his name? Hilton Hiller. Hilton Lord. Triple H. Halloran Hilton Hill, the Triple H on the Marlon oh, Dave Show. I got one thing I want to do when we come back. Get it in back. quick. When we come back. I got to talk about joy. All right, All right. perfect. So we're going to be right back. We're going to take a little break. It's time to play the Marla and Dave Love Game. Here are Marla and Dave to explain how it works. Get it out. All right, so this is the time for the Mad Love Game. The game, the Mad Love Game, was a game created by Marla me. and I. Just me. Or Marla and me. Just, um, just Marla. It's still correct way of saying <laughs> it. Uh, and it has the three categories that we think impact most relationships. Sex. Did sex. Did you hear me say Sex. Finance and communication. Lord, all he ever wants to do is it roll. It is played ring. by rolling <laughs> a single die that has those categories on it. It also has the Mad Logo and Lose a Turn. Mad Logo, you get to choose whatever you want to. And usually you choose sex if you know what's good for you. But uh, how I'm going to allow you, uh, ask you to please by roll the By the way, this is what us. happens when you get older. All of your sex joy is in rolling the die. You see how, <laughs> how long you spent with that? That's, Notice Dave, how the hand that's foreplay. Like that's wow. that's foreplay right there. <laughs> what does that mean? Go ahead, Hal. Blow your mind. Money. Money. Get All paid. Right. Let's see. Get, what, get ready, get noticed, get paid. So the finance question for today, what is the number one money issue that destroys most marriages? What is the number one money issue, Hal, you're not going to get away from this, that destroys <laughs> most marriages? And, now also, and let us remind you that yeah. all of the questions have actual answers that have been given to us through the PEW Research Pew Center. PEW Research Center, absolutely. So then there's so also how, the additional. Hal, what do you, what's your guess? Uh, not having enough. Not lying to each other about the money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, money Kay. miscommunication, I would say. Yeah. I, right. I would say, yeah, I would say that what destroys marriages is... Yeah. Yeah. That All right. Line. Lauren, <laughs> so what, what do you think? Financial infidelity. Yep. I, I think that's a good term. I think it's like when you don't trust the other person with what they're spending and you feel like you have to hide it, and then it comes out and you find yeah. out everything, and then it's just a I, big I, old mess. Yeah. Financial infidelity. Okay. So what would be interesting, the actual answer, and before I give the answer, each card also has a further discussion point on it that actually leads to further discussions so it, it's a lot of fun when you're playing with a group of your friends anyway the actual answer is studies show the culprit to be blame you can get over just about anything but when you do not accept responsibility and you blame your partner yeah. then suddenly sense in life. you can't really work things out yeah because you're not working together you're working against each other and you know it's just not going to work out when one partner is blamed by another for a financial downfall, it often leads to relationship problems. The further discussion uh, question is, how do you avoid blame? How do you avoid blame? Um, I, I think that it's a I think that I think that when you look at your willful choices, which is something that I've had to learn even later in life, when I look at the fact that that no one has ever forced me to be anywhere, even though I may be influenced by different things, love, you know, family, commitment, whatever it is, I still made a conscious choice. Hmm. So I own that. So when I own that, then if I made this choice and I, I don't like the result, I can turn around and make this choice and make a make a different result. How what do you think? How do, how do you think you can avoid blame? Yeah, own it. Own it. Yeah. I also think that one of the ways that you can avoid blame is to make an environment where someone feels comfortable to own it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But that's never really up to the other person. That's still a personal well, decision. Kind you, of. Can, you can make it, so, you can so make for it instance, friendly. If someone uh, goes through an actual infidelity uh, physically, sometimes you can say, well, you know, I can see how I contributed to your need to do that 
by either not being available or some kind of way I was involved even in that. Well, you're involved in the partnership, but the infidelity is always a result of that only individual's yeah, of weakness. Of course, of course. Anyway. <sighs> <laughs> Hal, wait. <laughs> Remember when, Hal, when we first started, I just have to throw this out. We we were we we were actually trying to model our show and Hal was going to be the ref. Did you see his face just now? He went into this. <laughs> like he, it looked like Hal was in a ping pong. He was at a tennis match. Yeah, I said, oh. anyway, anyway, that's, that's the, the Mad, Mad Love, Love game. game. You, you can, can get, get your, your copy. Go ahead. You got it. What? Boom, what are you? Go. Love? In sync? Okay, yeah, you can get your copy of the Mad Love game that you can play with your family and friends right in on our website, www.marlindave.com, in Mad Merch. Don't forget to do it. The holidays are coming. It makes for a, a really, really, really fun game night. We're going to keep the show rolling. For adults. Be right back. David is a thinker. I never do anything sex, without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically wear my personality on my scene. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. This is the Marla and Dave Radio Show on the Universal Broadcast Network. Before you get out of here, you will tell me who's the match and who's the firecracker. For the record, you, you designed this whole situation. Who's the match and who's the firecracker? We just know that they dance. Right before we get back to uh, the topic that we're discussing with Hal, it's time for this poll break for this week, Marla. What's the poll question that we de- dealt with last week? Last week, the poll question was, should Colin Kaepernick's national anthem protest result mm. in him being blackballed by the NFL? Um, is this the wrong Doc, yeah. You are, Marla. I was going to say the Hold actual on. question was, yeah, that's is right. the increased that. severity of weather events a result of global warming? Mm. Your options were yes, scientific fact, hashtag scientific fact, or no, political propaganda. Uh, this is always amazes me that we had a lot of people actually uh, uh, participate in this poll, and yet... We only had 63% to say yes, scientific fact. And it always confuses me that still some people will say no, hashtag political propaganda, but 37% said no. hurricanes at one time. <laughs> yeah, it's one it's single like, solitary place, but there's no changes. Uh, that, that confuses me. To be honest with you, that slightly confuses me, but I guess it is what it is. And we thank you for participating in the poll. The Next po- week, the poll question that we just go straight and answer the poll question. We want to hear your voice. Um, is Donald Trump's is Donald Trump's yeah, this bizarre, bizarre behavior yes. causing people to take a closer look at mental illness? Mm. No. Your options are no. Hashtag the new it's normal. the new normal. <laughs> or yes. Um, <laughs> hashtag taking, taking note. Taking notice. notice. Yeah. <sighs> well, anywhere our, that you can see Marla on social networks, you will find that poll question or right there at www.marlandave.com at the home page. We're going to get back to the show. Can you handle the truth? This is modern American dialogue in a mad world from two unique, fresh, transparent perspectives. This is the Marla and Dave radio show. All right, how we only got eight minutes left. Yes, sir. Uh, so you touched on... Get ready. He yeah. said. He said he wants to do joy. He no, 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 up. no. Let me okay. let me finish Let's, out. Okay. Wrap okay. up. So, so when you're ready, now they, they say luck is when preparation meets opportunity. Right. Mm-hmm. I, I don't control opportunity, but I can control preparation. Yes. So when you so I believe that when you raise yourself to a super high level of functional skill, and you're doing it for the right reason, mm-hmm. people start to notice you. Yeah. Right. And if you have committed yourself to creating and adding value then what happens is that's when people start to, when you say, I need to be paid, you, you don't really have to say it. People start saying, what mm-hmm. does it take to get mm-hmm. you to Absolutely. do? Absolutely. And when, when you get to that place, you start negotiating from a whole different baseline. Hmm. Uh, when you're trying to just get noticed before you're ready, hmm. you always have to beg to be paid. Mm-hmm. But when you're ready <laughs> and they notice you, there's a bidding war that goes on Absolutely. for your services. Absolutely. That will... And that's, it's a proverb. Seest thou a man diligent in his business, he shall stand before kings, he shall not stand before mean or obscure men. Wow. Okay. What proverb is that? The one in the, in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you have when you have your head in proverb for 10 years. All oh of them. Oh, my goodness. All of them. <laughs> that is, that's, that's amazing, man. But, but I think that another thing, though, is apply that whole model to relationships. Yeah. Hmm. 
Most people have never made the decision, A, to be great about anything. Mm. I've made the decision to be great, right? But then why not make the decision to be great in a relationship? Mm -hmm. what, what are the skills of a highly functional relationship? Mm. And have you invested in being better? Most guys that I've met have never read a book about fatherhood. Mm. Most guys that I've met have never said, I'm going to intentionally find three fathers or four fathers and once a quarter, I'm going to take them to lunch or dinner just so I can be around people who really know about this Absolutely. like you're studying mastery. So. Absolutely. Man, well, you also said you want to touch on joy. Joy is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Three letters. Joy. I know joy. <laughs> She's my cousin. So, 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 I was, uh, so I was studying that proverb that says, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Mm -hmm. Or one, one rendering says, a merry heart is as good as a cure. Yeah. And what they found is your body produces uh, an inflammatory protein called interleukin-6, IL-6. What they found was people that have a high level of joy suppress the production of this protein and have a more robust immune system. And at the University of uh, Pennsylvania, they've been really diving into positive psychology and there's certain habits and disciplines that increase the level of joy in your life hmm. and it makes you healthier and it makes your your brain more more um uh, uh resistant to stress but isn't joy a state of, do you think you can create joy that's just Absolutely. a question oh, is yeah. it just so is would it that a choice? be in spite of your circumstance right it's joy isn't about Happiness is rooted in happenstance. Mm -hmm. Joy is a state of mind. It is a mindset. It is a choice that you've made about what the quality of your life is. And there are certain things that lay down a baseline of well-being. The number one being gratitude. Hmm. So if you want to experience more joy in your life, you start with gratitude and there's a gratitude discipline. You write down three things in the morning for which you're grateful. You write down three things that would make the day great. You write down an affirmation based on I am. And in the evening, you write down what went well. What you're doing <laughs> is you're hardwiring your brain for happiness because you're thinking in patterns that lay down neural pathways. The more you lay down those patterns, the more it becomes your automatic mind set. Hmm. And the way it functions is your level of awareness changes. It's like when you buy a new car, you see more of them. Yeah, That's true. And it's not because there are more of them. Your awareness of them shifted mm. by being engaged. Mm. So when you engage in gratitude, what happens is you start seeing more things for which to be grateful because you're on the hunt. Right. Wow. And But you... The converse must also be true. Absolutely When you weren't true. feeling good because that's what you're aware of, suddenly you find more things to actually take you even further down. And I'll share this, Hal, with all of the stress that um, we've been enduring lately, that is the one thing that I do every single solitary morning that I have not let fail. And here's what I will find to be interesting that I'll share with everybody as well. I said this to Dave that my gratitude lately has literally been consistently every morning top of the list. I'm grateful that God actually allowed me the gift of a sound mind. Mm. Mm. I'm grateful for that. That's real. Because mm. that gift is, is part of a purpose that he designed me for, and I'm aware of it every day. I live in something that keeps me grateful for understanding that it, this I didn't make it, but it was gifted to me because it, it's going to take me where I need to be in a, in a divine purpose. I really believe that. And I think there's something I want to say before we get away. One is how proud I am of you guys. I love oh, you guys. Man, are you I mean, kidding that's me? real. And I, I'm proud of you guys for what you're doing with this platform and with this show. And number two, I'm really proud of you for the way you're processing this pain because to everybody watching and listening, for them to allow the transparency for you to see what they're going through as a family mm. and a community with the idea that maybe if we tell the truth about mental illness, maybe if we allow you to see the scars, you see that there's life after the scars, maybe the solutions that come afterwards for them to volunteer their pain for a higher purpose, that's strong. We definitely appreciate you, man. We Thank love you, you for actually. stopping by. You're a busy man, obviously. Who's the match and who's, <laughs> who's the firecracker? <laughs> you are the match and you are the firecracker. Oh. I don't like that. I'm the firecracker. He's the match. I'm taking away. I'm just overriding. Whatever you say, Howard, she's going to be the opposite. <laughs> I do, I do. Howard, right quick, all these wisdom nuggets and processes that you are so great at, how can we actually get our hands on some of those? I 
I'll work on it. Oh, see, there's a book in <laughs> we there. We gotta have Hal back there's again, though, because there's a whole there. other. There's there's the Hal, the musician Hal that we didn't even oh talk about, goodness. and Hal is a, a phenomenal songwriter. Ask Take Six. Absolutely, <laughs> you ask anybody. Yeah, I'm just saying Hal's that. Right at it. Love anyway, guys. our guest has been Halloran Hilton Hill. This is the Marlon Dave Show. You'll join us next week where we'll have um, actor Robert Davi joining uh, us in absolutely. the Madhouse. Absolutely. Indeed. See you next week.